Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about Yuya, but in a very sad way. Now, I am very vocal against cheaters and magic because it happens many times. It happens at your Friday night magic. I think it is very sad. It happens at casual events like pre-releases or drafts. It's very easy for people to sneak extra cards in their decks especially at those events, like a pre-release event, which is very loud. There's a lot of people. There's a lot of confusion. It's very easy to trade with your friend and then take down a pre-release. It's the same people who win every single pre-release. At least it is in my experience. Yuya had been given everything. He was voted into the Pro Tour Hall of Fame in 2006 with Owen. He had a 90% vote rate, which is incredibly high. He was never accused of cheating before. He had a very clean record. He had been playing Magic the Gathering for a very long time. He was being paid $75,000 to do something that he would have done for $0, just like Owen was doing anyway. And why would you give up all of that. So sponsorships, the Pro Tour Hall of Fame, which does pay him to be at every single event he chooses to be at. A Mythic sponsorship for $75,000 from just the Pro Tour plus the Mythic, including airplanes as compensation. I know that some YouTubers may not consider that way, but for the IRS, a airplane ticket to come to an event is compensation. And Wizard of Coast considers a compensation because you're supposed to pay taxes on it uh, from your end, not from Wizards of the Coast. FYI, guys. Now, he had everything that a Magic player could ever want. He had the fame. He had the sponsorship. He was in the Pro Tour Hall of Fame forever. Free plane tickets, free meals, a lot of respect, uh, a clean record. The document or the the posting that made it very clear as to why he wouldn't cheat. If you wanted to point out someone who wouldn't cheat, it would be someone with a lot to lose. It would be someone like exactly like Yuya. He would be the person that I would not suspect. He doesn't need to prove himself. He's already done so. There's no point. He was already in the top eight. He was just cheating for theoretically better sh seeding, which, yes, it's important with your a Tron deck to go first, but you're already in the top eight. You've already won a ton of money from Magic, and now he's banned for 30 months. His sponsorship is gone, and I don't think it's going to return. I would be surprised if they returned it to him, the $75,000 a year. He's not allowed to play Magic, and that's ent his entire livelihood. That's what he does as a job from day to day. Let's just say it in the perspective of life. There's no reason that someone who is given everything that they could possibly want in Magic the Gathering, every single thing that anyone could accomplish, you has accomplished. Why would this person cheat? Why would this person do anything that would be remotely close to cheating? Question one. Number two, it's actually three questions. One, why would Yuya do this when he has so much to lose? So much to lose and he lost it all. Two, why is the cheat so badly and so poorly executed? The cheat was not... Subtle, it was not um, like, oh, he took a, a a pen and there's like dots somewhere on Gideon and then you can say it's manufactured era or you could say, I mean, it was just the Tron lands and each Tron land was different from each other. And it's like, it's super obvious. Why is the cheat so stupid? Like, there's no other way for me to put it. You would expect someone who cheated at Yuya's level to be actually good at it, I feel as good as you can get, but definitely not as simple or as poorly executed as what Yuya got caught on. It doesn't make any sense, right? So one, he has a lot to lose. Two, it's so poorly executed that you have to ask yourself, 
this guy is either a really bad cheater or he wanted to get caught or something is not right here. And lastly, um, it's not only the amount that he has to lose financially or even reputation. It's you dedicate your whole life to one goal. And for you, Yad, that goal was to be as good of a Magic player as he can. And I would make the argument that he and Saito are the two most famous Asian Magic the Gathering players. And I definitely can say that they're two most successful in terms of wins. Why would you dedicate your life to something and then... It's not the loss of the fame. It's not. It's the respect for the game, right? I do feel like that if you... Even Alex, he came back, banned, came back, banned, came back, banned last time. He still loves the game. And I think in in some weird aspect, he respects the game because he wants to be win at it and be very good at it. If you believe Magic is a game of skill, if you believe Magic is something that you can get very good at and there is a difference in percentage of winning between you and your opponent, then you don't need to cheat. So the whole concept of cheating is you're cheating only if you think other people cheat. You can look at any sports, Lance Armstrong, you can look at baseball, uh, the pitchers on PEDs, and then the batters get on PEDs because they feel like they can't hit the pitchers, and the, pitch, and the other pitchers have to go on PEDs because everyone's in it for the money. But even... They grew up as children loving the game. Uh, you don't do something for as long as Yuya has done, almost 20 plus years, without loving magic at some point or in some way. So why do that to a game that you love? Um, because you know it's going to drag the game down. It's an eSports announcement they made late Thursday night. They're obviously embarrassed about it. They're going to pick a new person and... That's going to be a big deal because there's only 32 of them. Owen's gone. That guy's gone. There's 32 paid professionals and 32 special invites. Out of that 64 total, we had Owen be in trouble. We had Yuya be wiped out. And now we had MTG Mayfer from the other 32 pool, the special invite pool, being removed. It's a bad look. If you enjoy the game, you love the game, you want the game to grow, the last thing you want to do is be a cheater in the game at that high of a level. Two of the 32 streamers are people being paid to promote Magic Arena are no longer there in about the span of four months in two events. That's absurd. Like, that... Imagine that the NBA has 32 teams or the NFL has 32 teams and two of the teams got banned or were in college football and two of the teams got banned for whatever reason. One school, I guess, was really about that harassment. The other school was cheating. <laughs> you never see that in real life. It's just a so high of a percentage. There's only 32 of them. I assume that they were vetted. I assume that their credentials and their background, there, there was at least a background check given what happened with the judges previous to that. For this to happen, at, like, you might be like, oh, two's not a lot. Well, the two that we're talking about was the entire 2016 Hall of Fame. A whole Hall of Fame voting class is has just been removed from the Mythic invite, which they were paid 70 you were on the edge of something that you always wanted to actually be a paid professional Magic the Gathering player. Something that did not exist previous to Magic Arena or the Mythic Invitationals. You work your entire life to get to this point. And you have everything. You have, there's not a single thing missing from your resume. And now Magic will probably explode, may, ideally. And you probably believe, as an eSport, that Magic will explode. You will get more subscribers. You will grow your brand. Now you've been put in the penalty box for 30 months. You're not going to grow. If MTG Arena were to grow, let's say, like Hearthstone or League of Legends, again, I don't believe that's going to be true, but 
Yuya and Owen probably believe this to be true. They've been waiting their entire lives for something like this to happen. For them to get paid a salary, a stable salary, a stable income. For them not to worry about their next meal or you know, they can have their own apartments. Uh, they can rent their own apartments now. They spent the last 20 years working to where they are today. To get the opportunity. And due to luck, I imagine, a lot of luck, they got there. It's almost like um, one of those Chinese sagas, right? Where the the main character does... I'm watching one on Netflix called like Princess Weiwei or Weilei or something. And it's pretty good. It's almost like you did everything to get there. It took you 50 plus episodes... But you got what you wanted, and then you, and then for a simple reason, you just kind of said, "Nope, I'm good." It's like you got to the top of the mountain. It was really difficult and extremely lucky, and you should be feel very blessed. Why would you do this? It's from a psychology perspective. I would love to know from a psychology PhD, like what has to be the mentality to do this for the last 20 years, you've been groveling, begging, fighting, and scratching. You've been living a lifestyle that I wouldn't wish upon anyone with seven other dudes living at home. I think it comes down to the mere fact that some people cannot handle success and it destroys them and you had success for two months three months and it destroyed him it's very sad anyway bye guys